Hello and good morning to another edition of Monday. Oh, okay. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Monday Motivation with Bukola. So today, um, it's 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. I hope you all are having a great um, 4th of July weekend and it's long weekend because today, Monday, is a holiday. So I know some of you are taking the opportunity to rest in today. Enjoy your 4th of July. I won't take much of your time. It's just, you know, let's inspire one another again this morning on Monday morning on Monday Motivation with Bukola. And this morning, I have a great guest for you. Her name is Yvette Toko. She's the founder of Healing Words with Yvette. And she was here about two weeks ago, I think, and we had technical issues. So she's back again. I hope that today we can have a technical issue resolved and we can enjoy some healing words from Yvette this morning. So while we wait for Yvette, I want to give you um, some quotes, some motivational. I saw, I saw a healing quote online that I would like to share with you. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so I don't even know where this is from. It's like an image. Okay, one viewer. Is that you, Yvette? I see one person here. Is that you? Let me check my camera. Everything looks good. Yvette, is that you? Oh, I see two people here. Thanks for joining. <laughs> So let me, um, while we are waiting for events, the quote I got is, always defend your right to heal at your own pace. You are taking your time. You are allowed to take your time. So always defend your right to heal at your own pace. You are taking your time. You are allowed to take your time. I hope that this quote inspires you this morning. If you feel sick in your body, if you feel sick in your mind, if you feel sick you know, in your heart, I hope that this hope, or this uh, quote rather, will motivate you to know that you can take your time at your own pace and just trust for healing and go at your own pace. Do not worry that you are slow. You can take your time. You can take your time. You don't have to worry. You can take your time. Hey, we have Yvette on board. <laughs> Good morning, oh. Yvette. How are you? 
I'm fine. How are you, Bukola? Hallelujah. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> so yes, I need to use my uh, cell phone now because I don't know what's happening. The the laptop okay. isn't working. Okay, okay. Thank God we got you on. So uh, please, I would like to welcome Yvette on the show. Yvette is the founder of Healing Words with Yvette. Yvette is a teacher. She's a wife. She's a writer. She's a poet also, you know. So Yvette uses the power of the word for healing. And yeah. she's going to be um, talking to us this morning about how to use our words for healing. Thank you again, Yvette, for coming on the show. I remember two weeks ago we had this issue, so thank you for uh, coming back. And I'm glad that the technical issue, we don't have too much issue right now. So we can just get right to it. We still have some time here with us. So welcome to the show. Okay, welcome and good morning, everyone. I, first of all, would like to say thank you very much for having me on the show again, officially this time. <laughs> and I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about Independence Day. But before I do that, I just want to say to the viewing audience, think about what independence means to you personally. What does it mean? Of course, the definition is freedom, liberty, things like that. But I want the viewing audience to take about 30 seconds and think about something that they would like to be free from, mm -hmm. independent from, or have personal liberty from. Could it be excess weight? In my case, it is. Could it be a bad relationship? Could it be financial problems? Could it be your health? Could it be something about your business? All of the things that make us feel significant. I want you to think about one of those areas. And Bukola, I would like to start with you you don't have to tell us what your personal <laughs> one is unless you want to share. But it's, it's uh, my yeah. message today for Independence Day. Because a lot of us are thinking about the fireworks, the, the good food we're going to have with our family and friends. We're thinking about so many things. We're thinking about what it means in American society to be an independent nation, but I want you to think about your own personal Independence Day, your own 4th of July. Wow, my own 4th of July. Well, it's true that I went to the fireworks last night. <laughs> <laughs> and my own, in, I have a lot of them that I want to be independent from. One of them is, you know, financial freedom, number one, first of all. And I'm grateful to God for good health. Mm -hmm. But then, what else do I want to be free from? Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm more, okay. I want financial independence. <laughs> money, okay. money, money, money. <laughs> that is a very good, um, that's a good goal for financial independence. Um, what I want to share about that is that a lot of times the way our society is structured, we feel like we just need money in order to do X, Y, or Z. And we, we need it because our bills need to be paid where, you know, there are so many other things that go under that. But one thing I want us to try to do is to look at this thing a little bit differently when it comes down to money or finances. Okay, I apologize, I'm using a, a smaller um, earpiece. 
Um, so mm -hmm. what I would like to say for uh, the financial, if we are working towards those, uh, any endeavor in life, we need a why. We need a big reason why that motivates us mm -hmm. towards those goals. When we do that, this sets our internal clock or our thinking towards why. Why am I doing this? Why do I need financial independence? And it makes mm -hmm. us a lot more ambitious. It makes us stay focused towards our goal. And even if we have a setback, the, the downtime is not as long versus um, not having a big why towards our goal. Another thing about this is it's not necessarily about the money. It is more of a spiritual thing where we can look at it as um, power. When we have money to spend or save, it makes us feel powerful. We can influence situations and circumstances when we have financial independence. So my healing words is mm -hmm. to start setting up the reason why, as opposed to why you don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. Flip it around and look at and affirm in the positive of your reasons why you have the money to do what you're trying to do and why you're doing what you're doing. And that's what I have to say for your healing your finances. So these positive affirmations there sometimes. You. <laughs> I am wealthy. Um, I am intelligent. You know, all of these things, those are good. But if you have a reason why to add to that, then it makes it a lot more uh, manageable. Okay, hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Yvette. I have a question for you. So, um, you know, first, or maybe you know, this is going to be second, that's supposed to be my first question. Like, can you just give us a little bit um, background about yourself, who Yvette is, and why healing works with Yvette? What brought about the idea of healing works with Yvette? How did Yvette get there? Who is Yvette? Okay. Uh, well, you introduced me, so that was a little bit about my background. I Those few roles that I have, the very important ones. And how healing words with Yvette came about is because of years of basically coaching people, motivating them, encouraging them, inspiring them. And it's something that I naturally do. Um, about 2001, I want to say I took an assessment at church and it was uh, on our spiritual gifts mm -hmm. and mine came back as an encourager. So I'm someone who loves to encourage people, edify them, and just see people excelling and doing their best. What really hurts me or is something that I'm really passionate about is when someone says that you cannot do something or that someone else cannot do something. It really makes me excited about the possibilities of how they are going to achieve the goal that they are trying to achieve. Um, you know, I know this is not necessarily a, a Christian conversation, but because I am Christian, I will bring some of these, you know, some things in. Oh, the every Bible conversation is welcome here. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Bible tells us that, you know, it talks about mm -hmm. us having abundant life. Part of abundance is being able mm -hmm. to have some of that financial independence, being able to see your dreams or your your goals come to pass, come to fruition. Uh, there's another scripture that talks about mm -hmm. our gifts 
making room for us. Encouraging people is one of my gifts. It is not my education. Our education is our training that allows us to participate in the marketplace and obtain some sort of income to pay our bills. But our gift is something that can make room for us. It can provide us with financial resources, but it also provides us with something greater that cannot be taken away, which is the gift that we have to share with others, with humanity. And when we're doing all of this exchange, it can continue on forever and ever. It doesn't ever get old. It doesn't go out of style. So Healing Words with Yvette came about uh, having a conversation with you. And I wanted to do something with the gift that I have. And we came up with the business name. And now I am taking that on, on a larger scale. So I have a healing page on Facebook. I also have a Twitter page and I'm working on some other things. The website is actually under construction due to some long-term technical difficulties, which I pray will be sorted through very soon. Um, and that's how Healing Words with Yvette started. Yes, that's true. And <laughs> wow, that, you know, it, it feels like yesterday when this business started dealing words with events. And I'm sorry about the technical issue because I know that part of that is my rookie rookie um level in technical issues and we're still battling with blue host. I hope you are listening to this video so please let's resolve this issue so healing what with event website can get back live yes yes i had to call blues out on this one yes yeah. so you know um and you know you we talk about healing words healing words and i kind of like how you even um talk about healing for finances using our words even when it comes to finances it's not just in our body so would you say that the kind of healing can be multi-dimensional so it doesn't necessarily have to just be in our health it can be in other areas can you tell us other areas that uh we can use our words for healing yes um i will share an example with you this example is a personal one it has to do with family my mother was very ill um, back in, in the, um, last summer. Last summer in July, she became very ill from an internal issue with her, um, her colon. So she had surgery and was in the hospital for a very long time. Um, my mother passed away four months later in the hospital, but I want to backtrack during the time when she first was hospitalized she was in a, a near-death state at that very moment the doctors called me and said we don't think your mother is going to make it you need to get here as soon as possible so i immediately left minnesota and went to michigan where where i was born and raised and where my mom was hospitalized and I said, mom is not going to die. She's going to live. And so this was the beginning of my family watching me and seeing me believe and have faith that my mother would live. So periodically, you know, family members will come in and they would talk about the death state that my mother was in. And I said, excuse me, we need to step outside. I need to have a conversation with you. When you come into the room, I need for you to only talk about living. That's the conversation I need you to have. 
Well, you know, and the response was, well, she can't hear us. She can't feel anything. I said, no, to you, it looks like she can't hear or feel anything. But as long as there's still life, there's breath in her body, she can hear and feel everything that we're saying. So I need for you to change it. And so this was an ongoing response to my mother's healing and recovery. So with an, and I stayed in the room with my mom. I prayed around the clock. I believed for her. I was standing in the gap for my mother that she would live. And I used the healing words. I used the scriptures. I talked only good things, only positive things, laughing and talking and sharing memories with my mother as if she was not hospitalized. And within a matter of days, the situation turned from extremely critical to where my mother's vital signs started functioning more normally. She was alert, her eyes were open, her body had retained a lot of fluid, but then that started to subside and her um, kidneys were functioning and everything was turning itself around. Now, during this course of time, I had to fly back and forth from Minnesota to Michigan. And it seemed like every time I would leave, my mom would have a setback. So that would, that told me something that my words were making an impact. You know, when people would come into the room and they're wailing and they're crying and carrying on, I said, no, you cannot do that because we need you. We need your strength. She needs your strength. And so that is one way that I use healing words to help my mother endure the time that she had. And in the end, she was very peaceful when she passed on. So I want to just encourage people, using your words can turn a situation around from a negative situation to a positive one, a more fulfilling one. Hmm. So even like, around family members in their situation it's just the better option to use the positive words even when the situation looks like there is no way out using the positive words can still make a way out for someone yes because when you use healing words positive words, affirming words, what that does, it gives us all one thing. And that one thing is hope. That is what everyone needs in order to keep going. That's just the one key that we all have that propels us forward is hope. Whenever some situation or circumstance looks very bleak, we feel like odds are against us. The one thing we have is hope and holding on to that does make a difference. And I mean, there's countless stories of people who have survived horrific events and times in their lives by holding on to their hope. When you give up hope, it's you feel like it's a lost cause and you stop trying. And that essentially is akin to like a state of death. Hmm. Okay, and then I, I want to talk a little bit about your literary work. Thank because you. Yes. I know um, you are a writer, you are also a poet. So what kind of poems do you write and what kind of books do you write? Okay, um, I have written three literary works. Um, two of them are based on my experiences in Africa when I lived and worked there and also married there. And my other work is a uh, book of poetry. Um, I have another one too, is, is pretty much a compilation of positive quotes to for married couples. But I will backtrack to um, what 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 makes me um like write poetry or what kinds of poetry do i write 
I do not have a specific genre of poetry. So, you know, I'm not like romance or just religious poetry mm -hmm. or erotical or something like that. I write poems when I am moved to just write what's on my heart. Whatever I'm feeling, I would just write that. And towards the end of this broadcast, I will share a poem with you that I wrote in 2011. So I will end the broadcast with that poem. Um, it's a very short poem, but it's very powerful and very um, meaningful and relevant for today, Independence Day, and then all the other topics and things we've been talking about. So what about the books? You know, the books too, are they spontaneous titles? <laughs> okay, uh, I will. <laughs> about. Okay, two, the, the first, one of the titles is Togo and a Little Inspiration. I lived and worked in the country of Togo, which is in West Africa. And I came across, I came up with that title because I knew that my time in Togo would be very challenging. And there were a lot of people worried about me going to live in Africa. So I wanted my readers to still be inspired while I wasn't here with them physically. So I just decided to name it Togo and a little inspiration. So throughout the publication, these are like blog compilations that I turned into a book. But throughout, there are some video links to inspiring videos. There are some poems in there. There's all kinds of stories in there. And I think just about in every uh, blog entry, in every situation and circumstance, I always kept a positive attitude. I always kept the hope and looked for a positive outcome, no matter what. And so that is what the readers will find if they decide to purchase Togo and a little inspiration. The second publication is titled For the Love of Cameroon. My husband is a native born Cameroonian and I, I was married in Cameroon. I absolutely love that country. Um, it's very beautiful. Uh, everything about it, I just love it. Even some of the most challenging things that I had to endure while living there, they became very normal and just beautiful parts of my life. So that is where that title comes from. And then the title of my poetry book is called breath eyes and memory in me and i came up with that title thinking about my ancestors and all of the things that i have down in my dna that inspire me to be a writer so that is how i came up with that title wow thanks I'm going to be sharing the links to, I think I shared one link. You gave me one link. So if you can provide me with the other links to the other books, I will put them in the description because this will be on YouTube. This uh, broadcast will be on YouTube. And I want to thank you, our viewers, this morning for joining live to hear Yvette. This morning we are on Monday Motivation with Bukola and we have with us today Yvette, she's the founder of Living, um, sorry, she's the founder of Healing Words with Yvette. And I'm glad we could have her this morning. And once again, I would like to wish you all a happy 4th of July for those of you in the United States or those of you that are U.S. citizens but are in other countries around the world. So happy Independence Day. And back again to Yvette. We have just four minutes more to go. Uh, what would be your last words of healing before we go into the poem for our viewers this morning? Okay, my last words of healing would be know your why. Know your reason. Keep 
your hope in front of you no matter what. Hope is the thing that encourages us. It energizes us to go forward with whatever we believe that we want to achieve. In the beginning of your um, motivations, you started out some weeks back with uh, quotes from Muhammad Ali. I was not able to tune in that morning, but I want to say something about him. Um, Muhammad Ali was like the epitome of someone who uses their words. So he was affirming that he was the greatest. And I am sure on the inside, he probably was very nervous right before one of his great fights. But because he talked to himself and he kept that hope out there and believed that he was the greatest, he actually propelled himself into and became what he was saying. So if we continue to think, believe, and say what we want to do or achieve, then it will happen. It will happen. So keep believing, keep hoping, and go for what it is that you say that you want. And in our final minutes, um, the poem, okay, I'll let you lead me into that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say that, that you should read, um, we have like two minutes more. So can you read the poem, please? Okay, I will recite the poem. It's, the title is called Acceptance. Too high for mountains, too low for valleys. I found solace in the arms of an invitation. And that is the, the poem. And the poem was actually written during a time where um, some things were going on. It was a giraffe and turtle type of situation <laughs> that you talked about this morning. And someone invited <laughs> me, yeah, someone invited me to something. And through that invitation is where I became empowered to share my gift and that is what inspired me to write that poem. Yeah, so I want to encourage your the listening audience. Have your why, have your your big reason, keep your hope and you never know that one invitation from someone may be just the very thing that would change the course of your life forever in a positive way. So say yes to invitations. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you so much, Yvette. I really, really appreciate your time on Empower... Uh, sorry. I really have... I'm just going up this morning. I feel like I'm still sleeping. Um, I really appreciate your time on Monday Motivation with Bukola this morning. And I will go with the reason why. So I I wrote down what you said. Know your reason why. So I encourage you all out there. Know your reason why. Why do you want to be healed? If you are sick. Or if you are going through a tough situation. Or if you are going through a challenge. Why do you want that? challenge to turn to a better situation why do you want it to be in your favor mm -hmm. and keep telling yourself your reason why as Yvette has told us this morning know your reason why to be able to use your words because when you know your reason why you will fight to live you will fight to become what you desire to become when you know your reason why but when you don't know your reason why it may be hard and you might be in the same situation for a very very long time so i encourage you this morning to take a note and say and and ask yourself a question 
what is my reason why mm -hmm. and begin to use your own words for healing thank you all our viewers this morning for joining i saw people you know joining um, the broadcast throughout thank you so much for joining and i will be sharing the link with you on this video once it's available on youtube i'll be sharing the links to events literary work the poems and the books so you can go get your copy thank you so much and i hope to see you next week thank you thank you Yvette. i'm glad we could make this work today i'm yeah. really really happy thank you so much and god bless you thanks god bless bye you. bye thank you. and i hope that you can come back on the show sure what did you say I was saying thank you and okay. God bless you. And sure, I can come back on the show anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks and God bless you. So, my people, thank you so much once again. And I hope to see you next week. Have a blessed 4th of July. Enjoy today. Don't get into trouble drink but don't drink too much eat and but don't eat too much just have fun enjoy the day and celebrate freedom with family god bless you and bye bye